Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. If we haven't met before, I'm a K through six elementary art teacher and I teach at a Title I school just outside of Washington, DC. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about something that we all want more of, time. I'm gonna tell you how I manage my time both in my class periods, but also my time as a busy art teacher. I'm gonna share some apps and tools that I use to help make my job easier and more enjoyable. The first one that I love talking about is my time timer. And I do think that I have the largest one that they sell. It's probably about 14 inches. What this is, is a visual timer. I'll link it in the comments down below. Um, and you set it and just forget it. Throughout the class, it will move and the red time gets smaller. I do point out to my students when half of the time is over. I point out that it looks like a Pokemon, Pokeball, or whatever they're called. And I will also mention to them when it's starting to look like a slice of cheese so that they're seeing that the time is elapsing and I'm refocusing them to use that time well. Now, if you have one of these tools, one of the hardest things to do is remembering to actually set it. So I have in my opening routine that I do with my students, a slide within my Google Slides that's just a simple photo of the timer to remind me to stop and set the timer. Now, this has worked really well in my classes. When it does beep, then my students know that we will start our cleanup routine until this year. Uh, this year, I've got some kindergartners that as soon as that thing beeps, and it's not scary, it's a polite beep, they will start sobbing that art is over. So I added another way to help manage my time with them. I am playing a song um, that lasts about two minutes right when we have two minutes left before the timer goes off. And I'm letting them know as soon as the song stops, then we're going to begin cleaning up, kind of easing into the fact that we're about to transition um, and that I will be giving those cleanup directions once that song has done. And that strategy has really worked well. Now, the next tool that I use to help manage my class time is if someone needs to go and take a break. So this timer is from Lakeshore Learning. It's a um, teaching store. There are physical stores, but there are websites as well. And I give this to students and send them to my timeout area or a calm down zone. And they would bring this back to me when the time runs out. This one is a five minute timer. Another way that I use time, again, for behavior management is I have this digital timer from Lakeshore Learning. So if my classes receive three reminders, so three points here on the frown side that they are not following the rules, we do a five minute reset. So I put five minutes up there on our silent art timer and then students are to remain silently working during that time. If a student does talk, I simply just add on a minute. Now this really works well. In fact, there are some times when a class is just really rowdy when they come in and I will start right away with that so that I can get them into that space where their bodies are calm and they are ready to stop and enjoy making their artwork. They're not up here at a 10, but their bodies are calm and ready for learning. So that's a strategy that I definitely recommend that you try. Now with my classes, I've got all classes coming in, coming out all day long. How am I tracking that? Well, I use an app called the Timetable app. I think it's really geared towards high, uh, college students, maybe even high school students with these busy um, course loads and schedules. So you can customize it and put in your own schedule and then set when you want the alarms to go off. I have the alarms set to go off five minutes before the next event on my schedule. So this is sort of a backup to my visual timer so that I don't forget to stop and clean up. I'm going to show you how I set that up. It has a beautiful, colorful interface, and I think it is perfect for art teachers. This is what it looks like when you open up the app on a desktop or an iPad. When you're opening it up on your watch or your phone, you're just seeing it filtered by that day, but it's easy to toggle between one day and the next, and it's really super easy to set this up and maintain using this app. It's really something I only think about at the beginning of the school year. When you're setting it up, you simply press the plus button there at the top, and then you're able to type in the class name. Um, and I like to put the grade level as well. You can choose 
what day of the week the class comes um, and as well as what time. You can even add multiple. So if you have something that always happens every day at nine o'clock, like you have bus duty or something like that, you can easily add that in without having to go through and type things out over and over. You can choose all these um, pretty colors, which is one of the reasons I really like the app. I just really like how um, colorful and fun it is and super easy to use. Um, there are settings where you can go in uh, and make notifications. So I have the notifications on and I have this set to five minutes before, but you really can customize that and change that um, as you wish, including choosing what kind of a sound you want to hear. And if you're on a school holiday or something, it's super easy to toggle on and off the notifications so that it is not disturbing you. Um, you can choose if you want a schedule that's just for one week, you know, if you have a rotating schedule that rotates every two, um, three or four, four weeks, you can do that. You even can pause um, the timetable. So if uh, you're on a school break and that means, you know, it's not going to week two, uh, you could pause things if that's the way that your schedule works. Um, and it's great because this does, again, sync across devices. So you really have it with you wherever you go. Um, I find it's really nice for filling out my plan book uh, and having it um, easy and accessible for me. So I just got to school and the first thing that I do is power up my laptop and then open up Google Keep. Google Keep is my master to-do list that I use. Google Keep is a free app and it's part of that Google app family. The reason I really like it is because it syncs across devices. So my school doesn't use Mac, but I'm still able to open up my list because it's running through Google. It also syncs to your Apple Watch, your iPhone, and your iPad. So for me, that really makes it so that I can work on this list on the go whenever I need to. I'm in the habit of, I will look at my to-do list for the morning when I'm working in the afternoon. I will also look at this in the evening just to see if something else pops into my head or there's something I realize that um, I can take off my list and I will look at it in the morning. So when I'm waking up and kind of reviewing what's going on for that day, I'm looking at this list. And to the top, I've pinned two notes, my morning and my afternoon. And this works a lot like the notes app on your phone. And it is a reoccurring checklist. So you can check and uncheck items. So I have some things that are checked that are completed at the bottom, maybe because I already did them uh, yesterday afternoon or maybe because they don't apply for today. Um, the things that I need to do are unchecked at the top. So here's a close up of what my note looks like for the morning. So the things I'm trying to do this morning and most mornings are pull out my seating chart folders, clear off the drying rack as needed, uh, open up my slides, sharpen pencils, uh, sort artwork from the drying rack. I've got to reprint um, my schedule. I found a little mistake in it. Uh, draw some lines for the sixth graders. Actually, you know what? That is already done. I checked inside my drawer and it had already been finished. So. Anything that's done, I'm checking off there, and then it goes to the bottom under completed. I need to get some white paper out for the kindergartners and switch off the paintbrushes. So the things that you see down here are things that I often will do in the morning, but I don't have to do today, or I may have already done. Uh, I know that yesterday afternoon, I actually already pulled out the seating chart folder, so I can click that down there. But um, tomorrow, you know, when I haven't done that yet, I can go down there and find those seating chart folders and just click that again, and then it repopulates it and it goes back up to the top. So it's a reoccurring checklist that I can use day after day for things that I find myself frequently needing to do. And I can add things in and personalize this list as needed. I also keep an afternoon list of things that I need to do. So I'll be going through this in the morning. Um, we are going to be painting today, so I'm going to click uh, washing the paintbrushes. I'm going to need to put the chairs up because I got kindergartners at the end of the day. Uh, I moved the trash for my custodian. I always uncheck contact parents. So that's on my afternoon to-do list always. Oh, I found my phone. It was missing for a while. Um, let's see. I'm going to have to wipe off the tables. Sharpening the pencils this morning, so I don't think I'm going to have to do that again this afternoon. But I'm looking for things here um, that maybe I would need to do again. I've already found the three through six paint charts. So I'm trying to delete something that's already been checked. 
I just come over here and then a little X will pop up and I can completely delete that so it's not down there in my options of completed items for things that I need to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and get started on my morning list. Since I'm already sitting down at my laptop, the first thing I'm going to tackle on this list is my uh, slides and getting those opened up. So I keep a little file folder up there in my bookmarks tab, and then I'm just clicking there, and then all my Google slides are already inside of there that I need for this week. So I'm not digging into my giant Google Drive and trying to find things. I've already pinned those to the top, and they are easy to find. So I'm opening up my rules. Uh, my opening routine is something that I do with every single class, so I keep that opened up all day. Uh, next, uh, my third graders are coming, so I'm going to open up their fruit bowl watercolors. Then the sixth graders are coming to work on their animal self-portraits. Uh, then my fifth graders are coming, so I'm opening up the character collages. That lesson right now is on Teachers Pay Teachers, and I have a video about that on YouTube. Uh, it's a character abstraction, and it is so much fun. Um, after my fifth graders come, I have kindergarten. So I'm going to take things off the drying rack just really quickly. I am going to sort them by class and then put them over here on this countertop. And then today while my students are working, I'm gonna put this artwork in number order. So I'm using name tag labels for my students. I have this in a couple of my videos, especially the one about organizing artwork that you wanna check out. Um, I use the name tag labels and the seat numbers to make things easier to grade and easier to pass back that next week. I survived the day, made it to the afternoon, and now I'm tackling this afternoon to-do list. And I should point out that these are kind of my have-to-dos. I'm only putting maybe like one or two, oh, it would be nice to get done during this time things on to my list so that I can leave for the day. So I'm gonna open this up and start to tackle these items and I'll bring you along. <music> I am grabbing my seating charts for the classes that I have for tomorrow. They are, of course, in rainbow color order. Okay, these are all set. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not sure where I got this next little hack from, but I heard it recently in a time management video and it really helped me. Um, and that is to stop and ask myself, what am I doing? So like throughout the day, you know, as you're going and doing something, I know like yesterday afternoon, I was sorting these markers and then I just stopped and asked myself, what am I doing? I am doing something that my students could be doing. So I stopped. Um, I was doing something really fun that was just sorting things by color that could easily be done by a student. So I realized I was wasting my time. And you can continue, you know, throughout your day at different times, just getting in the habit of asking yourself, what am I doing? Um, I know the other day I was kind of switching clothes over, getting out like some fun Halloween clothes, and I had buckets on the ground, and then I started like looking up something on my phone. And the next thing I knew, I was sitting and scrolling, sitting on the floor in my closet, and I asked myself, what am I doing? 
Okay, I'm wasting time. So I think you're going to catch yourself if you kind of get in the habit of doing that. You know, and sometimes it's okay if you're wasting your time. You can ask yourself, what am I doing? Hey, I'm relaxing on the couch. That is totally fine. That's not what I'm saying, but it helps you to catch. Are you doing something that's working towards your goals? Are you doing something that you want to be doing? Or is it something that you can delegate and get somebody else to help you out with? Um, so it really helps you to break down and really rethink how you are using your time. And if you're using it in a way that you want to be using, you don't want the day to go by and you're like, uh, what did I get done today? So stopping and asking yourself that can be really helpful, especially if you feel like you might be wasting some time. Another concept that I've learned recently is these time dominoes. And I think I was always aware of them. I just didn't really have this name for it, this time dominoes name. Um, it is when you are setting something up so that all the other actions that you want to happen are going to follow after it. So for me, one of these is setting alarms. So the first one that I have is I have an alarm that goes off every night at 745 to remind me to start getting ready for bed. It just kind of alerts me, you know, that it's getting later and that I need to kind of start with those nighttime routines and sort of wrapping up what I'm doing. It doesn't mean I'm going to bed at that time, but I'm just aware that if I start getting ready at 745, getting my kid ready, starting to clean things up, set things out for the next day at 745, I'm able to get to bed at a reasonable time. And that's kind of a domino because if I can get to bed at a reasonable time, I'm not tired uh, or at least so tired when my alarm goes up super early that next morning. Okay. And then because of that, I'm able to get in a little bit of movement before school starts. So those are all things that are priorities to me, things that I want to get done, but I figured out what that first piece was. And that is an alarm going off to just stop me and alert my brain that it's 7.45 and it's time to start wrapping this day up and getting ready for the next. Another alarm that I set is an alarm at 7.15 in the morning to remind me I need to be leaving for school soon. I'm not walking out the door at that time, but it's kind of stopping me and helping me to realize, hey, you need to leave within 15 minutes, so be wrapping up this uh, getting ready stuff and getting out the door. Other things that I do might be something such as at nighttime when I come home from school, one of the first things that I do is repack my gym bag. So I'm unpacking what's in there and then I'm repacking it because I know if I left that until the morning, I'd be running late, I'd be stressed, I'd forget, and then I'm not doing that habit that I wanna do that very next day, which is going to the gym. Now, I also have this habit of getting ready for bed right after dinner. So I'm not going to bed then, but I'm going upstairs, I'm putting on my pajamas, I'm showering things and stuff like that if I need to, and I'm brushing my teeth because I know that if it starts getting late, I will start putting off going to bed because I'm too tired to brush my teeth. You know, the thought of going upstairs and washing my face is just too much because I'm exhausted from the school week. So I do this earlier in the night so that I know when my bedtime comes, I'm all ready and I just need to get myself upstairs. I don't have to do a lot of extra things. Once you start identifying these dominoes in your personal life, you'll start to see them in your classroom. One that I've noticed for me is I need my classes to come in calmly and quietly because that's really setting off How's my lesson going to go? How are things going to go when they start making today? So if they're coming in high energy, screaming, not paying attention from the very first minute, I know how things are going to go. So I'm able to stop and teach them how I want them to come in. So from the very first week of school, this is in my um, routines that you would teach at the beginning of the year video. I had a little visual of what I needed, that I needed people to stay in the line that I needed voices to be off, that I needed students to sit down on the carpet, to have their eyes forward and their ears ready to listen. So I met them out in the hallway that very first week and taught that routine because it's important to me. I know it's one of those dominoes that's gonna set me up for success throughout that class. I also reinforce this every week. I'm not meeting them at the door all the time anymore unless I'm hearing something that doesn't sound quite right. But if I hear them coming in quietly, I am just reinforcing that by when we start going through our opening routine after our greeting, 
I give my students a point for if they came in quietly. So I'm projecting that same little visual image that I taught them the first week, kind of reflecting on how did we do? Did we come in in a line? Did we, yeah, look, we did all these things and we get a point. We have that little one minute party celebration, which is part of my behavior management plan. And we move on. If things weren't right, that's when we stop and correct it and we can reteach and reset those behaviors. So look out for those things because they really do make a big difference once you can identify them to make your job easier. Now, I have several videos that are fantastic about how you can save time as a busy art teacher. I'm going to pop them on the screen for you to watch next.